Hello, welcome back to another waveform video. I'm showing this in waveform 11. I'm talking about locating using markers. We have a markers track that holds marker clips, which you could see at the top. I've already set this up. I will show you how to put these in and the various kinds of markers. But for right now, I wanna show you a demo of how you navigate with markers. You'll also notice up here, there'll be a little thing that pops up when I hit a number. So these markers are named, but they're also numbered. So let's just take five as an example. If I hit the key five, so the markers are controlled with the number keys, either on your keypad, your numeric keypad, or the top row of your keyboard. So I'll touch number five, and then briefly a blue box will show up here. And during the time that that is on the screen, I can hit return like this. Maybe that's a green box. So you just type the number of the marker and then hit enter, or it would be return on my keyboard. So then you can jump to any of these markers. So if I want to go to the ending, which is 11, 11, and go to the ending. So that's basically how the navigation works. There's two types of markers, the bars and beats marker, which is shown here with a little musical note on it, and the absolute time code marker, which is shown with a clock on it. The absolute time code markers are stuck to a very specific time and they don't move around if you change the tempo. For example, if I speed up the tempo of this song, you'll see that the absolute time code marker does not change while the other markers will adjust their size accordingly. The absolute time code markers are useful for marking something like the end of the song if you want to know exactly where you want to try to fit it in, or if you're doing something related to video or film where there is a very specific time where something needs to happen. Now the markers track is one of the global tracks, which there are four of. The tempo track and the chords track are shown here. The arranger track is also visible. If you don't see the marker track, you can click the eye for the UI navigator here, and you can see that you can enable any of those four global tracks. Then how do you get these marker clips onto the marker track? They're clips and they work much like any other clip. You can delete them. You could create one by duplicating it from one that's already there by hitting D. So I just duplicated that chorus three. You can also split them if you put the cursor over it and hit the slash key for a selected clip. You can duplicate them like that. You can also resize them using the triangle arrow handles in the upper corner like this. You could stretch it out to fill up to mark over the song section. In addition, you can drag them in using the clip object. So you go up here, drag it down to the marker track and then choose between a bars and beats marker and an absolute time code marker. It's a little bit small there. So if you want to resize it, you can do that. The ends will snap if you have snap to grid turned on. They'll snap to the nearest grid increment like that. Typically, if I'm building out a song like this, I put in the first one and then I duplicate it a few times. Markers have properties that you can see in the properties panel or in the actions area, or you can pop it up if you have the pro version, which has this feature where you click something, you can pop up your favorites. I have this feature assigned to option A at where, by which point I can select the color. I can change the marker name, currently called marker nine, but maybe I would call this ending. You'll see that those same properties are available here in the actions tab. If you have the full properties panel open, then if you click that, you'll see that those same properties appear here. So there's several ways to locate or navigate using the markers. As I showed you before, if you type in a number, then you can jump to it. This also works during playback. If you happen to type in a marker number that doesn't exist, then waveform will enter it. So I'm gonna go out here where there's nothing playing. If I just hit enter or return, you'll see that it starts adding markers. So that means that if you're trying to queue up some things, 
for playback that you want to go back to later, you just hit that and it will create the next available marker. I have not stopped playback. The next available marker would be 12. So if I type 12, now I can navigate to that particular marker. So it's possible that you might accidentally create a marker by putting in a number of a marker that didn't yet exist. So if I put in something like 14, you'll see it appears in red up here, meaning that that marker is available. If I go ahead and hit return, it will insert that marker at the current cursor time position. Another way to insert markers is to go to the marker track itself and right click in the header area, you'll see that you can add bars and beats markers or absolute timecode markers there. Now let's talk about the markers tab in the browser. You can see I'm on actions right now, but I'm going to click markers and you'll see I've got a nice ordered list of all my markers. I actually got two endings in there. I'm going to change that one to outro. Now this list of markers also allows navigation. You'll see that as I click on these, it selects the clip. You can also shift click selections like this. Now one of the interesting things about this is it allows you to quickly set the loop over any of these things. So if I wanted to set a loop over about the first half of my song, I can click song start up to the, through the chorus, shift click and press A. Pressing A over any selected clips sets the in and out markers as you can see right here. Then all I need to do is press L on the keyboard to activate the loop. But I'm gonna leave the loop off right now. So to position the cursor using the markers tab, you just double click these. You'll see the cursor jumps to that location and you can do this during playback. So a really quick way, if you're working on a particular section, it makes it very easy to get to that section. Whether you're in playback or not, if I want to go to verse two, as long as I know the marker is marker four, I just hit four, hit enter, and it jumps right there. Very convenient. Also on the markers tab, we have the ability to add the markers from the bottom of that, or you can select any marker or group of markers and delete them. Deletes only a marker, doesn't delete any clips or anything within your song. So here's a scenario that might happen. I'm going to show you something that's a little nuanced to how the marker numbers work. If I shorten this clip up and say I wanted to change the second half of this verse to be a pre-chorus, so I duplicate that. Notice what happened over here in the list. It just used the next available marker. And that available marker happens to be marker 10, which puts these out of order it uses up the next available marker. There is an easy way to renumber these, but it is kind of a trick. It is also explained in the manual. Open the controls panel, and then from the markers tab, select all of the marker clips with a shift select. And then we want to just rename while they're all selected to something else. I usually will rename them to two and you'll see that that has the effect of renaming them all. They all just take out the consecutive numbers. If you really want to see it start with a one, then you can go back and rename it one, and now you see all of the marker numbers are all cleaned up. Now, of course, they're different than they were before, so you'll need to know that as you're navigating your song. So that's an explanation of how to navigate with markers, how to put the markers in, the different kinds of markers, and how to use the marker track in general in waveform. I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.